What's going on, everybody? This is Broken Games HDR. And first of all, Happy New Year to everybody. Hope everyone is having a great new year so far. So to kick off this new year, I'm going to start off by talking about and giving my impressions of this game called Ready or Not. I've been very pleased with this game. I've been having a lot of fun with it. And I'm going to tell all of you all about it. So Ready or Not is a realistic tactical PvE first-person shooting game where you are essentially on a SWAT team that executes missions such as bomb defusals, uh, taking care of ac uh, active shooters, dispatching hostiles, and saving hostages. And there are a bunch of different difficulties for you to tackle these missions, right? Currently, the video that you're going to see and most of my experience comes from playing this game on normal, which is actually very difficult because this is still a realistic uh, SWAT game, so you're not going to be taking a whole bunch of bullets. You're not a bullet sponge you will die very quickly right and i'll show you some examples of that right but there's different different difficulties i've main, mainly played on normal with the people who i've played with uh, because you have to unlock the other difficulties and i believe it ranges from uh normal uh hard very hard and insane i can only imagine what insane is like because like as i said normal presents a very valid difficulty so there is a PvP mode, but I believe it's currently in very early stages of development. But the base game is all about the PvE right now. I think the PvP could have, you know, a lot of potential, but I think they should focus on building the base game because I think the foundation of what they have here could be something special. Normally, I'm not the biggest fan of, of co-op. You know, normally I don't like, t uh, you know... Uh, getting in a game with other people and just taking on AI. But this game has enough difficulty and enough challenges that I've really been enjoying it, right? So it is currently on PC as an early access game. And the developers have admitted that they released this game through early access earlier than what they want uh, even wanted to. So it's a very early beta build that you're playing. But I got to say... For a very early beta build, this game runs very well. Um, it, it looks good and it, and it plays well. Of course, you're going to encounter bugs and all those things, but this is a very uh, solid game uh, so far. So th this game, I think if it has the right amount of support and success, it could make its way to consoles because, like I said, it's currently only on Steam. The game is developed by Void Interactive, which is a New Zealand studio uh, that was only founded in 2016. The first trailer for Ready or Not premiered in 2017, and the game didn't come av become available, according to my understanding, um, in early access until about three weeks ago. So there was a big gap from the time, you know, the game was kind of uh, the teaser trailer was revealed to, so, to the time just a few weeks ago when it was actually made avail available uh, for people to play in early access. So according to what I understand, they are a very small studio. So that explains why the game took so long. Upon first sight, most people would compare this game to Rainbow Six Siege. And even though it does have some similarities, uh, it's more akin to what Rainbow Six wanted to be when it was initially introduced as Rainbow Six Patriots, if many of you remember that situation. Even more accurately, this game is a spiritual successor to the old SWAT games that were mainly on PC from like the early, was it the early 90s to the mid 2000s? And uh, I don't know if any, any of you played that, but that's really what this game is. I am actually, you know, pretty sure that Void wanted to name this game SWAT SWAT 5 essentially because the last SWAT game was SWAT 4 but obviously they don't have the rights um, because you know their website pretty much describes this as a SWAT game and that's what it plays like. So besides Rainbow Six Siege which obviously didn't take a realistic approach to gameplay there has been a void in the industry for a while you know, for a strategic, you know, tactical FPS game like, like this. I know there's like, you know, Escape from Tarkov and a few other FPS Sims, but none, I don't, I don't think there's none exactly in, you know, that plays like a SWAT game. I have been, you know, just really impressed and, and have had a lot of fun with this game. What they have set for a foundation has the potential to be something outstanding. A lot of the big FPS streamers are catching on to this game and, you know, they're loving it and they're supporting it. And the popularity is, is steadily rising. So let me just talk about the game a little bit more, the mechanics and all, all those things. First of all, the game sounds amazing. The sound design is better than some other 
AAA FPS games on the market, which blows my mind because this is a small studio and some AAA games have, you know, 500 upwards of 500 to 1000 people working on it and it'll sound like they recorded, you know, their 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 audio and their sound design for weapons in in somebody's garage, right? So it it just really impressed me how good, you know, the 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 sound design is in this game. The game visually looks good, it's satisfactory, and it seems to be, for the most part, well optimized. You will get into some situations where your uh, frame rate may drop to like 60, which is, some, you know, <laughs> if your frame rate drops to 60, that's not the worst of your problems. It may drop to 60, um, but for the most part, it seems to be uh, well optimized. But like when I'm playing, if I play at 1440p, I'm easily, you know, above 120 frames. You don't need any crazy PC to play this. It has DLSS and resolution scaling, um, as you can see uh, in, in the in the options here. So let's talk about when you're in game. So you start out in the SWAT headquarters, you know, the lobby, the briefing room. Um, there's a training room where you could, you know, use all of your weapons and utilities and tools. Uh, you can uh, change your weapon loadout and your customization. Uh, and customize your weapon. There's character cu customization, which obviously all of this is limited because it's early access. Like I said, keep that in mind. So your choices for all these things uh, are limited. And you, this is also where you select the mission you're going to go on. So understanding the basic mechanics um, and how this game works is important because if you play this like any other, other average FPS, you will die and you will die quickly. You, you, have, to, you have to have fucking good good awareness for this game i know that's why i was like this is oh crap i'm stuck with him oh my god damn damn this nigga died right in front of me oh my god i'm scared i'm hot this is a game where you have to be smart and use real tactical close quarters combat methods when engaging the level you can play solo and have ai teammates but you don't want to do that Trust me, you want to play this with friends and you want to be able to communicate and you can have up to a squad of, of five total people, including yourself. Some of the equipment you can choose uh, from are like flashbangs, gas grenades, door cameras, so you can look under the door and see if enemies are on the other side. You can have a breaching shotgun uh, because sometimes on the levels there will be traps behind the door, right? So if there's a trap behind the door and you just kick it open or you just open it, it's going to explode, it's going to kill you, or it could be a flashbang um, could be a flashbang trap, so you can't just, just run through doors all willy-nilly. There's also C4, door wedges, ballistic shields, tasers, and a bunch of other useful equipment. For example, the door wedge, that you, you are going to be playing in environments where there are a lot of hallways and a lot of doors. And let's say you don't want somebody, uh, you're, you're, you know, you're trying to clear one room and trying to open, open one door and you're focusing on that. You don't want nobody to come up and shoot you in your back. So there's a tool called a door wedge where you can literally put a door wedge at the door behind you so it will be locked closed and nobody could just come up behind you. Stuff like that is just really cool to have. So being that this game is going for a realistic approach, you will notice that the HUD is very minimal. There is nothing telling you how many bullets you have left in your magazine. You have to manually check by holding the R button. Obviously, I'm talking about mouse and keyboard. And it will show you how many bullets uh, are in each mag. So there will be a HUD that comes up and shows you how many bullets you have in each mag, but there's nothing on screen constantly. And this game will not automatically reload for you. So if you forget to check the, your mag, your magazines, then that's on you. 
right? That's completely on you. The game will not reload for if you if you try to shoot. It's happened to me multiple times where I've tried to take down an enemy and my gun wasn't shooting, and it was because I forgot to change my mag. Well, Skyline, don't you have it? I feel like there I haven't have been oh. any traps on this. Oh, there's a guy in there. There's a guy in there. Careful, DP. Oh, I, need, I, need, I need to check my mag. Oh, it's empty. Oh, hold on. Bro, you don't quick mag? Bro, you're the one in the doorway, BG! Shut up! Shut up! If you're gonna check your mag, walk backwards. Shut up. He said, let me check my mag. What if he pulled up and blasted you in the head, Well, bro? he didn't. He couldn't do well, anything. He did. <laughs> he's down. Good job. Get on the ground now. Of course, there is a leaning function, so you can look around corners without revealing too much of your body. The walk speed is pretty slow, so that's something a little bit weird for people um, to get used to. There is no sprint option. So when going through each level, right, you will be dealing with civilians, which means you can't just shoot at every target you see. This game will penalize you if you don't act like a SWAT officer, essentially, right? So... If you harm a target, you're gonna like lose points for that. You can even you can even fail fail a mission if you just shoot a, bu a bunch of uh, civilians, or you could uh, fail that part of your mission. It won't necessarily restart you unless that was like the core part of your your mission, I believe. Um, but that could be one of your objectives that you fail. So there will be long hallways and a lot of doors, and you have no idea what's behind them. As I said, sometimes it could be explosive traps or flashbang traps. Um, sometimes enemies could shoot through door. There could be a dude on the other side with a shotgun. He might shoot through the door before you before you even open it. That's possible. I've seen that. Right. So that's where the once again the breaching uh, shotgun or the peek mechanic comes in handy because you can peek through the crack of the door and you may be able to see the trap and defuse it before completely opening the door. Hostages and enemies aren't just standing around, right? They will move around the level. They will try to flank you. So these aren't, aren't just like static positions that the enemies and, and, and uh, hostages are in. The location of enemies and hostages are also randomized each time you play a level. So each time you play a level, it, it's not exactly the same. Things are randomized. The level design is the same. This isn't uh, RNG or anything, but where everything is placed, everybody is placed, is, is very different and what they have equipment they have may be different and the traps and all of that is randomized so you know and sometimes you won't be able to tell if somebody is a civilian at first right some hostels look like some hostels look like civilians and some civilians look like hostels the main way to tell them apart is obviously is is if they have a gun which is not always easy to tell at first right a lot of the levels on this game are very dark so it would be best to choose either night vision goggles or the flashlight underbarrel attachment for your gun. And what's interesting about this game is you may have noticed when I was in the options, there is no option to adjust your brightness, which is an intentional de decision by the developer. Because if you could just abuse the settings in the, in the brightness, then you would have no use for equipment. You wouldn't need to use the night vision goggles. You wouldn't need to use a flashlight. And those things would just be useless. And I found this decision strange at first, but it actually makes the game way better that it forces you to use those tools. And it's also better for the atmosphere. Some hostels will act as like they're just giving up. They'll put their hands up or they'll maybe kneel down. I, I think I've seen. And then they'll pull, pull a gun out after faking that they're giving up. So you have to be careful. Usually if you're uh, restraining a target, you have to have somebody watching your back because somebody could you know, uh, try to shoot you from, from another angle. The, the same person you're uh, detaining could possibly try to pull out a gun on you. So you have to be very aware of that. Things are not always, uh, you know, as, as they seem. It, that's what makes this game very tense, uh, you know, very, very exciting. Uh, when engaging with civilians, you must issue a command to get them down, put their hands up, and you must arrest and report them. This is how you secure hostages in this game. You can't, it's not just, oh, you kill all the enemies, uh, all the all the people with guns, and you don't got to do nothing with the hostages. No, you actually have to secure them, right? It's similar when engaging enemies. When you kill an enemy, you have to report it and also secure their gun, which is considered like a bag and tag. So this, this I think I've explained a lot of the basics of this game and, and a lot of things you really need to know. The game isn't overly complex, um, as I would consider uh, some other FPS FPS sims, um, 
shooting is pretty straightforward. Um, there's, I wouldn't say there's uh two, there's like too tall of a learning curve. I feel like I've been playing, I've been playing this game a week, and I com, you know, completely understand all the tools and and most things about the game. And I just love the tactical element. I love that there, you know, that that it requires communication and coordination with your teammates, and you have all this equipment to engage in the levels. The game is currently forty dollars on Steam, but I personally think it's it's been worth it. I've been having a blast. Uh, Void Interactive announced a January update that's coming with new weapons, equipment, and miscel miscellaneous other improvements. So, if you like this type of game if you like siege if you maybe like the idea of swat because i know most people probably haven't played the you know the older swat games if you're into this type of tactical strategic uh swat fun type of game i highly recommend you check this game out it's it's been a blast playing with people um i really enjoyed everybody i've known that's given it a chance uh has has been really enjoying it so yeah, um, I recommend you check it out. It's been a lot of fun for me. Um, I, I I can't get enough of it. The game is extremely, extremely addictive. Um, and, and it's great that not all the levels, once again, it's great that all the levels are randomized so you never feel like you're just having the same experience even if you play the same level over and over again. So those are my impressions for the game. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. In, in the in the comment section, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I upload uh, or live stream because I've been live streaming this game too. And it's been hilarious to say the least. And uh, yeah, uh, make sure you check out all the other videos uh, I've, I've been posting. And um, yeah, I'll check y'all on the next one. Hopefully, I've, I know there's, there's some things I forgot to mention about this game. Um, but... That's for you to experience and for you to learn. Once again, highly recommend you give it a chance. I'm out of here. Peace. Fucking rat hole, bro. Oh, he's taking his middle finger at me, bro. Fuck you. I kill him right now. Say the word, bro. Bro, I would too. <laughs> you niggas. Pretty sure he's just. Oh, uh, he's just right in front of the door. Lucky as fuck. Anub uh, Anub Watch out. Out. Just shoot the middle of the door. Yo, 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 right. Tony. Right. Nobody right. would right. know. Nobody would know. Nobody would know. Nobody I'm, would sure I'm, pretty, no trap I'm pretty sure he's dead. What the hell? It's, you got a suppressor on that? Yes, sir. How did he survive? Hold on. Wait, wait. There you go. All right. <laughs> yo, we heard him coming. Yo, we found him from the other side. We coming in from the other side. You heard him scream, right? Yeah, you, yeah. 